What a glorious picture. I'm sure you remember this from last year. This is the M87 black hole. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new announcements coming from EHT or Event Horizon Telescope and the almost movie they published allowing us to see what all of this looks like when it's moving around. So let's discuss this in more detail and well if you just came here to see what they published, here's the preview. Now I'm going to explain what you see in here and I'm also going to talk a little bit more about recent discoveries in regards to this black hole, but this is the nutshell of what they just released. But let me also talk about what this all means and where we're headed to next. So first of all, HD did promise us a movie. They said they're going to be releasing an actual motion picture of the M87 black hole in the near future. This is not it though. This is not their original promise. This is a recreation based on some of the older data collected for about 10 years before the uh, publication from last year. Now in case you don't really know what's happening here and what this picture means, Event Horizon Telescope is essentially a big network of several different telescopes that slowly added more telescopes and eventually had enough telescopes to create a kind of a Earth-sized virtual telescope that was able to see really, really far away. Here, the scientists compared this to kind of like looking at the moon and keeping track of someone playing pool or playing billiards on the moon. That's essentially how accurate these measurements are. And essentially, the black hole with the accretion disk and the relativistic jet right here, through the observations in 2017, transformed into this picture right here. And this is only a few weeks of observations. Here's what a simulated image of all of this looks like. And this brighter part right here, that's essentially the Doppler shift because of the motion of the material in the accretion disk as it moves either toward planet Earth or away from planet Earth. And in case you didn't realize, um, what you're looking at here is absolutely tremendously huge. Just to kind of give you a sort of a more terrestrial or technically solar system perspective, let me show you what our solar system would look like. The sun itself is somewhere right here in the middle, and this little dot that you might not be able to even see, that's essentially the orbit of planet Earth. So that little dot has a radius of about one astronomical unit. The slightly bigger dot is the orbit of Mars, and now this is the asteroid belt. And this largest dot right here, that's basically the orbit of Pluto, with the tiny tiny invisible pixel sized dot of our Sun in the middle. So yeah, this thing is pretty big. And the galaxy itself is also extremely massive, um, much more massive than anything else in the vicinity. This is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, nearby elliptical galaxies, which usually refers to a galaxy that sort of looks like this, although here the time flow is about 3 million years per second. In other words, these stars don't actually move this fast, and in reality all of this looks like this. But on top of this, there's also a very long, 1500 light years long astrophysical jet that's coming from the center of the black hole as well. Altogether making this one of the most fascinating and also most unusual, most powerful, and a lot of other most galaxy around us. Trillions of stars, very powerful, very massive black hole, and a lot of really interesting, highly energetic things happening here. And at a distance of 54 million light years away from us, which is uh, roughly around 25 times farther away than the Andromeda galaxy, this also creates the biggest black hole in the night skies that we currently have. When we look at it with a telescope, it's even bigger in size in the night skies than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. Which, by the way, if I were to put inside of this, would represent a tiny, tiny, tiny pixel right in the middle. But because it's so big and because it's so massive, things here move much slower, and also because it's so big in the night skies, this is the easiest black hole for us to study using telescopes. Which is exactly why the Event Horizon Telescope has been studying this black hole for over 10 years now, and has slowly been collecting data and storing it on various computers around the world. But for the first time ever, the scientists were able to collect all of this data and use statistical analysis using very similar algorithms to how this was created, and then by applying this, they were able to see what happens to this black hole in this almost 10 year period of time. And essentially, here's what they were able to recreate using the data from many, many years. I believe the simulation goes to approximately four years, and you can find the link for the full simulation in the description below. So what did they actually discover and does it sort of compare to what they originally predicted? Well, yes and no. 
Obviously, yes, in the sense that they see things moving around the black hole in the way that they expected them to move, but no, in the sense that some things are doing something differently. And specifically, things right here. The surprise came from this crescent, or this very large, very bright ring, that seems to wobble for some reason or another. And this wobbling is currently not really well explained. In other words, they didn't really expect it to move in this way. Now, in terms of the size and the diameter, everything seems to be maintained quite as expected, but this wobble is not understood very well. And in the simulation, you'll even see that it seems to continue for quite a long time and sort of goes back and forth, goes back and forth several times. And although obviously maybe this is something to do with the observations themselves or some errors in the analysis, a more likely scenario here is in regards to our understanding of the equation disk and the effects of gravity around supermassive black holes. Specifically, what the scientists think is happening here is that black hole accretion disks are a lot more hectic and a lot more unpredictable than most simulations currently show. In other words, even this most accurate simulation of the M87 black hole created by the team Black Hole Cam, whose video you can also find in the description below and whose research you can also find there as well, it seems that we kind of underestimated the total amount of activity and total amount of various hectic scenarios happening around these massive giants. So it's not as calm and it's not as predictable as we thought it is. Something else is happening around these black holes, something that only future observations and, in that sense, future videos will reveal for sure. So right now, nobody really knows what's happening, but whatever it is, it's going to be super exciting and um, obviously will result in another exciting news coming from the EHT team. But either way, right now there's really no theory to explain why this variation happens and what's causing all of these changes in these images. A potential explanation does involve magnetic fields, which normally are formed when all of this ionized material starts circling around and creates extremely powerful magnetic fields which could influence the actual motion of the accretion disk, but these are just guesses right now. Most importantly, new analysis is definitely going to be out soon because a new telescope from Greenland was recently added to the EHT, so they're going to have even more data to work with, and using very similar analysis from before, they're going to be able to create something even longer, something that looks even better than this. In other words, the movie they've been promising for, I guess, a year now is coming sometime soon in the theaters near you, technically on YouTube, right here. So make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be talking about this for sure. And from what they've announced, in 2021, two more different telescopes at different sites are going to be joining the EHT as well, allowing them to eventually create even better images of this, and most importantly, the other black hole, the one at the center of our own galaxy. The black hole that we have, um, because it's smaller, has material moving much, much, much faster. Unfortunately, it's currently very difficult for the EHT to do the same kind of images as we got of M87 around our own black hole. But as more telescopes are added and as the techniques to observe these black holes improve, we'll definitely start getting a lot of really exciting images and of course videos of a lot of other stuff that we've never seen before. And these new observations might even explain to us how, for example, these black holes acquire such tremendously powerful astrophysical jets, whose origins are still a bit of a mystery, and it will of course explain to us what other unusual effects might be forming here and how all of this one day could help us here on planet Earth. Although that's still really, really far ahead. We're still not entirely sure how all of this is going to be useful to us. Nevertheless, it's definitely super exciting to hear more about what EHT team is going to be able to produce and I'm looking forward to more of their announcements and of course more of their cool simulations allowing us to see the universe that we've never seen before. But anyway, on that note, check out the actual study for this in the description below and the other simulations I've used in this video to kind of take a look at them yourselves. If you've enjoyed this, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that also has a beautiful black hole on it. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.